We ran. Ran with the uh, last of our strength, like those who run for their precious lives. Like a doomed person, knowing that there is no hope to save his life, will still fight the inevitable and his own fate. I barely managed to close the heavy metal door behind me. I have no idea how deep this bomb shelter is, or if it's able to withstand a nuclear blast, but we have no other place to hide. She gripped my hand tight. Don't be afraid. Bits of the ceiling were falling, and my walls were shaking. I was prepared for the worst, but death is the kind of thing you can't ever be prepared for. But suddenly, complete silence fell, and it rang even louder than the explosions. Maybe it's time to say goodbye, she was whimpering. I want to comfort her somehow, but realize there's nothing I could do. Yeah. You know, I... A horrible bang almost split my eardrums. It seems that I'm under a piece of collapsed ceiling, but I don't feel any pain. All I want to do is not let her go. Holy fuck, what the fuck was he remembering? I woke up in a cold sweat, short of breath and gasping for air. It took me some time to come to my senses. It was a dream. It was just a dream. My questioning mind, however, refused to believe it. But who's that girl with me there? I didn't want to let go of her hand so desperately. Sadly, I could not recall her at all. The clocks were showing a few minutes past ten. I slowly came to my senses as, uh, as reality started to shake it shake out its uh, claim on my mind, and my stomach fully growled. All right, war is war, but lunch should be served in due time. It turned out that Olga wasn't here. She must have decided not to wake me. Well, thanks for our camp leader for this. After yesterday's adventures, I had to have a rest. Last night remained a blurry memory, which I didn't really want to think about. But now it's more important to find something to eat and... Well, to wash myself, exactly. Because a pioneer must always be clean and tidy. Wait, what the fuck am I thinking? Though I would agree that on this principle, even if I wasn't a pioneer, as a matter of fact, I'm not. On my way to the washstands, I met Electronic. He started to wave his hand and ran up to me. Good morning. Thank you for finding Shurik. Without him, I don't even... It's nothing. I was a bit embarrassed. No, really, don't be so shy. The country must be proud of its heroes. And what about Shurik? How did he look this morning? Is he alright? After yesterday's craziness, I thought such a question was completely valid. Yes, absolutely. The only thing is that he can't remember anything. Can't he? I wasn't surprised at all. This world just hates me, sometimes. It just doesn't want me to figure out shit. I wasn't surprised at all. Let alone given any answers. He says that he went through the abandoned camp yesterday and then woke up in his bed this morning? I mean, he remembers nothing between those two events. I see. Alright then. You missed breakfast, right? Come to our club, we'll feed you. I have something special. Electronic smiled in a conspiratorial way. Thanks, I'll come probably. I had to wash myself first anyways. We'll be waiting. I'll think about it. He waved at me and left to carry out uh, carry out his own business. There was nobody near the washstands. The water turned out surprisingly warm today. It's been warmed up already, I guess. I guess. Having my face washed, I realized it wouldn't be easy to wash the rest of my body here. Maybe I should go to the showers. But since there's nobody here, I turned on the tap in such a way so the water streamed parallel to the ground and started to take off my clothes. <laughs> Why? You stupid fuck. And what if somebody sees me? Well, I'll rinse and dry myself quickly, put on my clothes. The water, which seemed warmed on my hands and face, felt bone-chillingly cold on my body. The whole washing process took no longer than ten seconds, and I started to wipe myself quickly afterwards. How did something not happen? But I didn't manage to finish anyway. There were voices coming in the direction of the footpath, and the solution came to me in a split second. I grabbed my clothes and dashed into the bushes. A moment later, Elisa and Yana appeared near the washstands. Why would you risk any of this? Of course they're gonna do shit. You could have done it by yourself. Why did he bring me here? Is is it a big deal for you? Fine, let me. I peered at them and noticed they were both covered in red paint. What a surprise. I wonder how they managed that. Maybe it's not red paint, maybe it's blood. 
Elisa opened the valve and started to rub Oyana's back. Take off your bra. What if somebody sees us? Oh my goodness. Okay. I should have figured this was happening. What? Is there anything to see? She grinned. Okay, just be quick. It was true that there wasn't much to look at, but even so I stared at the girls narrowly, and pervertedly, and stupidly. And why? Why? It was a pity that they were standing with their backs to me. A minute later, Elisa managed to wash off all the paint. I'm done. Thanks. You're welcome. Elisa replied lazily. Listen, let me try on yours. She pointed at Elisa's bra. It won't fit you for sure. Well, I'd like to try anyway. But out here... There's nobody here, right? Oliana looked my way and smiled archly. No, oh, of course she notices. Okay. Run, 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 run. I was absolutely sure she couldn't see me in the bushes, but... Enough with this nonsense. Oliana wasn't listening to her anymore. Grab Elisa's bra with a dexterous move instead. Now, I have to confess, I had something to look at now. I watched the two girls chase one another in the blackness uh, around the washstands with bated breath. Elisa covered her breast with her hands so I could barely see anything at all. I leaned forward and stumbled over a stone falling out of the bush. Why? No. Am I still naked? Am I still fucking naked? Okay. They froze, staring at me. I tried to cover my nudity with my guilty face. A tableau last The tableau lasted for a few set, uh, seconds. Then Elisa took her shirt and somehow put it on in an instant. You? You? Her face had gone from red to purple. It looked like she would explode in a nuclear blast any second. The only thing I wanted was to disintegrate into atoms get as far away from the epicenter as possible. He was sitting there the whole time. Of course she knew. So, she noticed me then. Of course she knew. You? You? And I? Well, I accidentally... I know what's... Uh, you know what's... Uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a very good explanation. You know, we have a very good explanation here. Elisa rushed at me. Covering my butt with one hand and holding my clothes in the other, I ran into the woods. It seemed that the best solution to me at the time, as showing up naked in the middle of the camp, accompanied by two screaming girls, wasn't a good idea. I ran without looking back, and stopped a few minutes later to catch my breath. It seemed that there was no pursuit, so I managed to save myself. But at the cost of lacerated scratched, bleeding feet, as I had no time to put on my boots, I sat on the tree stump and sighed. Uh, sometime later, having dressed already, I left the forest. I need to decide what to do next. My feet are hurting, so I should go straight to the infirmary. But on the other hand, my stomach wasn't going to wait either. Maybe I should accept Electronics' invitation, or head to the canteen in hope of finding something to left to eat there. That's quite a few choices. Uh, no. I don't really care. I have more important things to do. I, I don't want to go to the nurse. I don't. And I feel as though this is just a wild card. So let's go for the wild card. I always took care, uh, good care of my health, and even better care uh, at the moments I couldn't bear it anymore. But now I was able to walk and my feet weren't hurting much, so my feet will heal up eventually, while hunger drives the wolf from the wood. Surely the pioneers didn't finish up everything. At least a couple of sausages, eggs, or at the worst case a few pieces of bread should be left. It was so deserted and quiet around the canteen that I even hesitated for a second. Isn't it here where every pioneer seeks happiness three times a day? Oh, I mean, even more sometimes. Isn't it an oasis of heated summer, summer desert? Isn't it a secret chemical lab studying how uh, types of meals unknown to science affect immature teenage bodies? Oh my goodness. Shut up, Semyon. Let's focus. Now this building looked more like a bastion abandoned by his defenders. Kind of like a Rochotte. I don't know how to pronounce that. Huguenots. La Rochelle of the Huguenots, maybe. Let's just get in, and the ghost of warriors who accept the heroic death will surround you. Uh, the sea anteen, the canteen, looked the way it always did, though. It was just completely empty, except for... Miku, who was cleaning a table. Seeing that, I quickly turned around and tried to sneakily escape, but I didn't manage to make it. Oh, hi, Semyon, did you come here to eat? You missed breakfast, didn't you? I mean, you didn't see it, but you could have been there, but I didn't see you. I good that you came anyway. Um, hi... Well, I... Yes, I just came up wondering if there's anything left, maybe. There's nothing left. You need to wait for lunch. You won't help me, by the way. I'm cleaning up here. What for? What do you mean? She puffed her lips and seemed offended. Somebody has to clean up. We do it in turns. You have your turns as well. Thanks, but no. Okay, got it. I was going to leave, but Miko couldn't, still couldn't stop. 
So will you help me? Uh, you know, I don't want to. You know, I know I won't. You know, I have some things to do. I'm Yes, I'm sort of an asshole. Especially to the person who just keeps talking, talking, and talking, and talking. <sighs> okay, fine. It looks like as though I've upset Miku. That's the way the cookie crumbles, though. You're lucky I even showed up and it was a potential thing in the first place. Leaving the canteen, I sat on the bench and standing right by the door and sighed tiredly. My feet were still hurting a bit, although not as bad as before, and there was still nothing in my stomach. There was quite a bit of time until lunch I decided to go for a walk. I picked a random direction which could be explained by the single word forward. In the end, I found myself at the square. It wasn't a square. I wasn't surprised at the moment. Of Genda appeared to be at the central hub of the camp, and kind of a kilometer zero. I sat on the bench and started to think. Four days have passed and I haven't got even an inch closer to working out how I got here. It's true that quite a few strange things had happened during this time, but almost every one of them can be explained logically after careful thinking. Every single one of them could have happened in normal life. Normal life. Well, the term lost its original meaning to me here. Now, everything could have happened, bar the whole how this started. You know, me turning into a teenager. Me just showing up here. The inexplicable reasoning for everyone avoiding the question of what the fuck this is this place. Reactions to the environment, the actions, the words people, or my own words. Indeed, none of it... None of this here is normal. In the past four days, my worldview had taken a series of painful punches to the stomach and uppercuts, which led to being, if not knocked out, then seriously knocked down. Sometimes I don't understand why I act one way or the other or say some things. Actually, I do understand, but not straight away. Such afterthoughts, however, don't help me act differently, more sanely, and appropriate to the situation at all. Moments of truth happening to me are becoming more and more rare. Only my wish during the first day was to get out of here. Then now my main concerns were to find food, how to avoid line up in the morning, and what to say to Olga if Elisa complains about me. Those things are truly important to me. And day after day, daily fuss like this overshadows the thoughts in my head about how the world around me, together with this camp and these girls, are completely abnormal. But I can't do anything about myself. Because I just forgot. In the same way we breathe without thinking about it, I am joining in everyday life of the local inhabitants more and more without realizing it. I'm steadily becoming an average pioneer. No, this is wrong. I shout it loud and slap my face a few times. All of a sudden, the bell sounded, calling the pioneers for lunch. Came in, and it came from the loudspeakers. Finally, I ran skipping along to the canteen, leaving my inspiring thoughts back at the square, where they could sound interesting to Genda alone, as if only he was alive. The day had just started, and I've gone through my many, uh, many things already. Hmm. So I started to actually pull myself to my senses, and suddenly, the food bell sounds and wakes me from my sensible thoughts. Great. Day just started and gone through so many things already, but I did it, and now have legitimate ground to fill, grounds to fill myself up on. Today wasn't the last one, so I could use, a, uh, so I could choose a free table. Lunch included pea soup and mashed potatoes with fish. It was a major disappointment to me as I didn't eat fish in any form and hence would get fewer calories than usual. Soon Slavia and Lena came to my table. Can we? She smiled nicely. Eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I stood up and pulled out a chair for her. Uh, please. I was in an excellent mood for that moment, uh, for that, in that, at that moment. Enjoy your meal. Saying that, Lena began staring at me and continued for some time, but then, after realizing how odd she looked, switched her to her plate. Um, you too. Do you have any plans for today, Semyon? Uh, no. I gave her an honest answer, as indeed I had no plans. Well, except for searching for answers, but that was more like a global goal. Do you want to take a boat ride to the island with us? The island? Well, I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Olga asked us to gather some strawberries. There are a lot of strawberries there, and they're so delicious. I can imagine and taste without even thinking, without even eating it, just by looking at Slavi's face. Strawberries. What are those for? I don't know, but it's indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been to the island yet. Yeah, sure. Within minutes, we are already standing at the pier. Well, here's the boat. Hang on, I'll go and fetch the paddles now. 
I was left face to face with Lena. Do you, do you, do you like strawberries? Well, not really, but they're tasty. Lena smiled. Isn't that the same fucking, it's a food. Ah, Lena. I didn't know what to say or how to continue the conversation. Slavia didn't come back. We could probably have just sat here till the evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty petals. Yeah, thanks. So, of course I'm doing everything. And we have this really inconsistent art again. Uh, we got into the boat, untied it, pushed off the shore, and tried to start paddling. Um, and where exactly are we headed to? Right there. She pointed her finger at the island. The island is named... Oh, the island is named the closest one. I wonder what captain gave it such an original name. Well, the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye, aye, captain. If only I'd known what was waiting for me ahead. I was an experienced oarsman. I'd rowed a boat just once or twice in my life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle, my arms hurt so badly that I dropped the paddles to get some rest. Ah. <sighs> Aren't there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places. But the tastiest ones grow there. Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is it hard for you to row alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh, uh, nothing. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the way, I spent concentrating on staying alive while getting to the island. Slavia and Lena, uh... Okay, that's a typo. Lena discussed something, but I wasn't listening. That was much too much for me. At last, we arrived. Completely exhausted, I got out onto the shore and looked at the bo uh, boathouse. It seemed so far away that I felt like the first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go. Slavia handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely 100 meters long, and it looked more like a birch grove with even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green sea beneath our feet, with wind causing lonely waves on the surface from time to time. The island looked like a lost paradise. It's no wonder that the most delicious strawberries gr uh, grow just here. We've got to split up. That way we'll do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Okay, you're right. My bad. So how are we going to split it up then? I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm on Slavia's path, if anyone's. So I'm probably going to just pick Slavia. I didn't want to walk here alone and hope that Slavia would join me, but I couldn't uh, bring myself to ask. Well, it's obvious. One basket for me, one for you too. I just selected the option, Semyon. Why are you going against my selection? Mm. No, let me go with you. Slavia smiled. Oh, okay. Leave Lena all alone? Yes, Lavia. Why would you do that? You're such a mean person. Why would you leave Lena all alone to her own devices? She seems shy. She could use a friend. You should be nicer, Slavia. <laughs> uh, I was a bit surprised, but I was also glad that it turned out like this. Lena seemed to take no offense at all. Okay, that's good. The reaping has commenced. The strawberries were delicious here indeed. I could probably eat them all if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to the garden ones in size and had a rich red color, so it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Slavia was walking right beside me, as we only had one basket. I felt like a mushroom picker, looking at every shrub and searching through the grass carefully. Pay attention! An entire bunch of strawberries had been left behind. Ah, yeah. I'm sorry. It's fine. You must enjoy being here, don't, uh, do you, don't you? You like nature, after all. Of course I do. Oh, that's what I said. You like nature after all. Of course I do. Slavia smiled. It reminds me of my home. We have similar bir uh, beautiful birches there. She gazed dreamily, somewhere into the distance. Look, I've always wanted to ask, what do you like in general? You look busy 24-7. It seems like you have no time to rest at all. Uh, you start to think. I don't know, really. Doing a variety of activities is enjoyable to me. Uh, enjoyable to me. I've been at this for a while and I'm starting to... Um, oh my god. My voice is starting to go, but I should be able to last for a while longer. I just need to focus up again. Well, that's understandable, uh, but still. I like knitting and sewing. Things like that. Slavia took a hand handkerchief out of her pocket. 
There were red, yellow, and green flowers embroidered on it. Uh, they were entangled with each other in a complicated way, creating sophisticated ge geometric forms. Such a typical Russian handmade handkerchief. Glimpsing it, I instantly imagined Slavia dressed in an ancient sarafan, sitting on a bench besides a ramshackle house and a crowd of playing children running around. It's quite cute. Thanks. Let me give it to you as a gift. Such a proposal embarrassed me. You shouldn't. No, take it. I looked at the handkerchief once again and put it in my pocket. Oh, thank you. Okay, that was weird. There's so many strawberries here that mere that a mere half hour after a mere half hour we had the basket filled up to the brim. It seems we're done. Yeah. We've got a lot, so it sure uh, should surely be enough. When we got back to the boat, Lena wasn't there yet. She need more time to fill the basket by herself. Yeah, I guess so. I looked at the river. Sun sparkles happily dancing across the water surface. Ah, uh, were the only thing that distinguished it from a mirror. That's how calm the river seemed. What are you think? Uh, what are you thinking about? Nothing really. And you? Me? I don't have thoughts. I'm just like some random NPC. I don't know. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, what will happen once vacation is over? We'll have to leave this camp and go back to our homes. Will I ever see anyone I met here again? Will I ever see you again? Oh, my. That's a new... That's a new, uh, pose for her. She looked at me with her eyes so full of sorrow that I couldn't think of what to say. Lena came out of nowhere, breaking the silence. Oh, you're done already. Here. She sold a basket full of strawberries. Great. Now we can go back. I still had Slavia's face and those words of her on my mind. Sadness and sorrow weren't the kinds of emotions typical of her. Could she be hiding them, um, all the time under her under a mask of cheerfulness? I had no answer to this question, and I knew I couldn't find one either way. Maybe later. The way back took less time as I tried to concentrate on rowing and ignoring everything else. My only wish was to get back alive, as, tri as the first trip hadn't gone without consequences, now with my hands starting to hurt, but only after a few sweeps of the oar. Having tied up the boat, I fell to the ground with no energy left. Slavia and Lena leaned over me. You could have said something if it was so hard for you. Yeah, how dare you? How dare you do just do all this work on your own? You should have told us. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. It's fine. I'll just lie here for a bit, and everything will be all right. Okay, get those baskets to Olga's ple uh, Olga, please. We have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree to with anything at that moment just so I wouldn't have to get up. Slavia put the basket of full strawberries next to me and headed to the square, happily chanting with Lena about something. The hardest part is done anyways. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After the rowing, they felt like cement bags. Oh, even while weighing barely more than a few kilograms each. So the trip to the camp leader's cabin took much longer than usual. I had to stop every 50 meters to take a rest. Once I finally made it, I put the baskets on the ground and sat next to the desk chair with difficulty. Oh god. Oh god, I've got presents for you. There was no answer. I barely managed to get up and enter the cabin. There's nobody there. So if you don't need them, it's up to you. I lay down on the desk chair and fell asleep. What the fuck? I had a weird dream about a strawberry race. I was rowing a boat with the last ounces of my strength, trying to escape huge berries that were chasing me, and had just red blood smeared across them. Everyone else in the camp was dead, they had eaten them already. My hands were failing me, I could barely see anything because of the sweat covering my face. Blood was ham uh, hammering in my temples, but the strawberries were getting closer. They were baring their teeth at me. But wait, strawberries with teeth? Samyan, Samyan. <laughs> Oga was standing beside me, shaking my shoulder. I see you've got a rich harvest, didn't you? Oh, thanks to the girl. Okay, but that's not all. Seriously, I was just anticipating the lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what strawberries are for? No, not a clue. They didn't tell me. I asked, though. I did ask. What an honest confession. We'll make a cake out of them. I see. Oh, that makes sense. To honor the miraculous rescue of Churik. It's all thanks to you. 
it's clear that getting the strawberries wasn't the last thing left to do. And why, please tell me, if I am such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration in my name all by myself? Well, I guess. So, I have an important task for you. We are missing yeast, flour, and sugar. And all of it, uh, and need all of it in the canteen before dinner. And those who make the cake can't deal with it on their own somehow? I asked pitifully. Of course they can't. All of them are busy. And you're the only one in the whole camp who does nothing. I do nothing. I do absolutely. Okay. As much of a stickler have I been to doing nothing, I have been doing shit this entire time. I've been doing so much shit. And fuck you. Fuck you. While her words were partly true, it doesn't make it any easier for me now. Moreover, those words felt like a bullet to my head. So, write it down. You got yeast in the infirmary, flour in the library, and sugar in the clubhouse. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I have no time. I'm in a hurry. Good luck. Fuck you. She smiled shyly, uh, slyly and left. Of course, there are a lot of strange things in this camp, but... Yeast in the infirmary? Okay, I can deal with that, but... Flour in the library? Ah, oh, sugar. No, it's way behind my beyond my comprehension. I spat on the floor. I don't want to, and I will not believe this. Tell me. Tell me you're pulling my leg. I cannot believe... I cannot be surprised. I would not be surprised if a crowd of fat green trolls would appear here right now beside me, with every one of them feeling obligated to laugh at me. So maybe to hell with this cake. I weighed my options for some time. Ah, <sighs> no, if such a major plan of Olga's fell through, I'd be in a war. I'd be in for a world of hurt, and it would complicate both my life in the camp and search for answers, which I stopped for quite a while. Seems I have no choice. Ah, uh, feels like I've gotten through more things today than all of the previous days combined. Thus approaching the clubhouse, I'd even forgotten to think about how awkward it must look be to look for sugar there. Speaking of awkward... Um... Speaking of awkward... You know what, I'm... <laughs> God fucking damn it. God fuck, I'm just gonna sit here for a second. And let this sink in. I'm just gonna let this sink in a little bit. What exactly is happening right here? They're making a sex bot. They're making a fucking sex... You know what? Here's an idea. Maybe every single person here is a robot. Every single one of them. And they're just making another camp member. <laughs> I just sure can electronic or enthusiastically building something. They're so busy that it, they didn't even notice me. I look closely. Some kind of robot. Or at least the body of one. Moreover, this robot was female and had animal ears. I don't want to make up theories about the purpose of such a device for the luminaries of the camp cybernetics. Even though the design looked practically workable, I had my doubts about this robot ever being able to conquer Earth, or at least being able to do anything of its own, on its own. But they seemed to be enjoying the process more than the end result itself. And that was something we shared, even though I didn't want to admit it. No, I don't want to admit it, because it's not true. Fuck you, Samian, don't tell me. Uh, God damn it. Um, on the other hand, they weren't uh, afraid of possible failure, criticism, or jokes. They were working towards their goal without paying attention to others, who would call it unrealistic or even absurd. Oh, it looks like I'm truly comparing them to luminaries of the sciences. Hey guys, I greeted them uncertainly. Oh, oh, Semyon, come in. We're always glad to see you. I was actually already inside. You know, sorry for what happened yesterday. I barely remember anything, but, well, never mind, it's okay. And what brings you to our humble abode? Electronic looked at me slyly. Sometimes I feel as though he made such a face when he knows something about the other person, something he can use in the right moment. Sugar. I need sugar. An image from an ancient video game suddenly came into my mind. Some kind of unit, uh, like a builder or something, cried out with all of its five pixel stature. Gold, we need more gold. We got it said Electronic calmly. 
Why would he want it? I felt that I shouldn't explain to Shark that he wants a big cake for him. I shouldn't spoil the surprise. I don't know. Olga told me to get some. Okay, hang on. Electronic disappeared behind the door into the next room. Why do you have sugar here? Why not in the canteen? Oh, when the food truck came last time, this is the last thing to unload. And given that our building is close to one of the entrances, I'd leave it here to save some effort. That's reasonable, isn't it? No. That is stupid. Why would you ever do that? It's the club room. How would it ever be used here? The door opened, revealing Electronic hauling a huge bag behind him. <laughs> wow. I really don't know what size the cake will be, but obviously that was way too much sugar. Well, thanks, but I don't need it all. But where would we put it? Electronic gave me a surprised look. We don't have a place for it other than the place I just had it. I mean, we just had a place for it. I mean, we obviously don't have a place for it now. You asked for sugar, so take it. It seems that the previous smile of his wasn't there without reason. So, maybe you'll help me then. It's not that far to carry. We're busy. He points his, his hand at the robot. I gazed at Shurik. He owed me after all. He hesitated and looked away in shame. I sighed, took the bag, and headed to the door. Thanks anyway. I sat at parting, exerting myself. But I didn't make it too far. Just after a mere 20 meters, I had to put the bag down to have a rest. I had no idea how much it weighed, but it felt like more than 20 kilos. On the other hand, I was just 200 meters to the canteen. On the other hand, even such a distance with this payload on my shoulder, or alternatively my hands, or my legs, or under my arm, or even my head, looked impossible for me to cover. As I resigned myself to move in minor sprints with prolonged pauses between them, so I couldn't get there so I could get there by night at least, I heard a voice behind me. Uh maybe I could help you. I saw Lena in front of me. Oh, I don't think you can. It's one of those moments when I felt painfully how dramatically I was out of shape. I can bring a handcart. A handcart. Why didn't I think of that myself? Yes, that would be great. Wait here, I'll be right back. She smiled and ran in the direction of the square. What would I do without her? It's good that Lena isn't always shy and can take the initiative sometimes. I started to think. She seemed quite unusual now. No trace of shyness on her face, and actually the complete opposite, smiles and confidence. The offer of help wasn't something extraordinary by itself, but getting it from Lena. Hmm. A few minutes later, she came back with a small with a smallish handcart. Put the bag down on it. Thanks. Uh, don't mention it. She blushed and looked down. Oh, the Lena we all know is back. So, I'll go then. Uh, yeah, see you. And thank you again. I shouted after her. Sometimes I felt like there are two different people living inside Lena. The second one, calm and happy and sometimes even bold, only appears when she talks to me, and not very often at that. Or am I making things up again? It feels like you are. It definitely feels like you're making things up, Semyon. I thought that it would be better if I get all the ingredients at once, so I headed to Olga's cabin with the handcart. Um, Up to the cabins, over to the... Let's go to the library first. I don't want to deal with that nurse. Save it for last. If every, uh, every other place on the uh, cake ingredient list made, uh, made at least some sense to me, then flour from the library made none. I thought hard about who would put it in the library and why, but I can find any sane explanation after all. Given Zhenya's harsh nature, I better knock first. Open. Zhenya appeared at me closely from behind her glasses. What do you want? Um, don't think anything weird, but I need... Well, I didn't want to look like an idiot and decided to explain things carefully. I need some flour. Olga said that it's here. I understand that it sounds strange to keep flour in the library, but I sent to you. And it's need for a cake to celebrate Shirk's rescue. Yes, I have flour. What's so strange about it? Jenny replied with a surprise. And at that moment, I felt like I'd been hit on the head with a heavy weight and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flour in the library. Sure. What's so strange about that? We're in Wonderland. I'm Allison. Now I'm gonna eat that magic mushroom here and I'll be back home. Man, just get high on shrooms all day. Hey! Uh, uh, yeah, I was daydreaming. Wait here, I'll be right back. She disappeared behind the bookshelves while I folded my hands and started waiting. A moment later, the sound of the trapdoor groaning on its hinges reached me. So, you need some help? I inquired loudly. 
I'll deal with it. Jenia barked out to me. She seemed to be in the basement, so I'll have to wait a little. Okie dokie. A few minutes passed, but Xenia still hadn't returned. I was starting to get worried when the door was suddenly flung open and Lisa came into the library. Because <sighs> of course she is. She looked surprised too, seeing me here. Uh, what are you doing here? Am I, not, uh, am I not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. Lisa was clearly a bit overwhelmed. Uh, why do, what do I care? She snorted and headed to Xenia's table. And why are you here then? Alicia measured me with her eyes carefully and opened her the mouth to say something. But then something changed her mind and turned away, hiding her hands behind her back. Uh, returning her book? I blurted out the first thing off the top of my head. It's none of your business. Why do you look so sad? She replied with a hint of hesitation. What book is it? Alicia was silent. Oh, come on, let me see it. I wonder if it's Miss High Voltage Keep Away. I wonder what Miss High Voltage Keep Away reads. It's none, of your, it's none of your business. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay. I don't insist or anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Elisa was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see a book in her hands. TV, movies, or computer. If one was available here, all these things seemed to be more appropriate entertainment for a girl like her. But she had a book instead. Try it. Yes. I'll stay on guard. Mm. She's setting me up for something. She's setting me- No, I'll do this. My curiosity won. I struck at the right moment when Elisa was looking away from me and snatched the book. Ouch! She screamed. And the following second her face took on such an expression that it made me question my decision. If I'm about to die, at least I know- I At least I will know what for. I had a copy of Gone with the Wind in my hands. Oh, this is what- This is what Lena was- Is there only one book on this campus? Or this pioneer camp place? It was the same book that Lena was reading when she on that evening on the bench. I was so astonished that I completely forgot about my imminent death. Is it interesting? <sighs> yeah. Elisa answered without any enthusiasm, blushing. Okay, then. I handed the book back to her. Elisa threw it on the table of the library and left quickly without looking at me. So, human things aren't alien to her. In the end, she too is a girl. After a quick review of everything that just happened, I concluded there was actually nothing that strange. Finally, Xenia's deep groan rang out, reaching um, each and every corner of the library. Grab it! I passed by the bookshelves and beheld the perspiring librarian sitting near the trapdoor, leading to the, into the basement with a small sack next to her. Well, they might have some sort of storehouse down there. Thanks. I took the sack and left the library. Thank goodness it wasn't too heavy, so I uh, carried it down to Olga's cabin without much effort. An infirmary. Uh, I felt like I visit the infirmary too often recently. But what can I do? That's how things pan out. I sighed and knocked the door. Come in. The nurse said without a trace of sing with a trace of a sing-song accent. Good afternoon. Hoka sent me here to get some. I hesitated slightly. Yeast. Ah, oh, sure. She gave me a broad smile. It's just that I don't have any. Pioneer. How so? She said that. Well, I had some, but now there's none left. I didn't even bother asking why she had it in the first place. Well, don't you worry. You can have some aspirin, for example. That could be some use. To, that could be some use to me, actually. Where did it go then? I sighed. Ah, oh, take this. She opened the drawer and pulled out some kind of bottle. I won't try pronouncing that. It was a well-known brand of cheap beer in the USSR. I took a cl uh, closer look. It was a brand of beer. What's the matter? Beer is also a fermented product. She gave me a deep gaze. Nobody would even notice. She had a point, but... Everything just looks so grotesque to me that I couldn't find anything to say. Are you sure? Absolutely. Could you at least give me a note saying that you gave this to me? Something to prove I'm just not smuggling beer. Okay, then. The bottle clearly wouldn't fit into the pocket of my shorts. Well, thanks. I'm almost shyly. Leaving the infirmary. Well, beer certainly could replace yeast. 
Even my limited knowledge of chemistry and biology was enough to accept this. But... Generally, walking around with the bottle in my hands looking looked like a silly idea to me, so I decided to bring it to Olga's cabin and hide it there. But I had to reach it somehow without anyone noticing the beer. I hid the bottle under my shirt. Hi, Slavia. I mean, I'm not a drunkard or anything. I mean... Uh, and everything would have been fine, but Slavia called out to me at the square. Actually, she sprang out from behind me and suddenly... He, that, uh... I even gave a start. How's it going? What exactly? You search for the ingredients. Oh, so you know already. Yes, I do. Slavia smiled. It's going alright. I answered, not trying to give away my unrest. And what do you have there? She pointed at the bottle sticking out from under my shirt. Ah, this. She got me. Ah, it's nothing. I blushed with a silly giggle. It's time to go. I was almost running, leaving the score with a puzzled Slavia behind me. It's great that she is one of those people who doesn't ask unnecessary questions bar the one she just asked. I mean, come on, Semyon. But there are people in this camp who like nothing better than poke their noses into other people's business like myself. Passing in the pioneers' cabins, I stumbled upon Oyana, who is one of those people. What are you hiding there? She gave me one of her cheeky looks. I thought there was no point in denying anything, so I replied in a provocative manner. It's none of your business. I'm a cipher officer bearing a message to headquarters. That's certainly a big message. I was carrying the bottle at waist high, so I was slightly embarrassed. Um, uh, slightly embarrassed. You want some help? I'll deal with it on my own. I walked past her confidently and proceeded on my own way. So now what's better to get caught with, an erection or a bottle of beer? To my surprise, she didn't say anything, nor try to pursue me. Now, it is a bit weird that Semyon seems so caught up in the fact that it's beer. Um, I mean... I mean, it would look weird for him to carry it, but... He was well over 20 for quite some time before this whole event. Uh, to my surprise, she didn't say anything, nor try to pursue me. There's nobody at Olga's cabin, so I successfully managed to stuff the bottle under my bed. That looks so fucking suspicious. Once I got outside, I sighed with relief. Really, I couldn't believe that I would ever worry that that much about a single bottle of beer, like I was back in high school. It's a good thing it's safe now. Even if somebody finds it, I'll claim it's not mine. I could always think of a suitable excuse for my for my enormous experience. You know, like the exact reason you have it in the first place, Semya. Ah. Uh. Finally, seems like everything had been collected. I took the handcart with sugar outside and put the sack of flour on it, followed by the two baskets of strawberries and somehow fitted it between them. And the beer was hidden under my shirt, just in case. The day was coming to its end, so I had to hurry, as cake itself would need some time to bake. Of course, I'd rather enjoy lying down, closing my eyes, and getting a decent sleep, but I couldn't just let Olga down. What? No, I can totally do that. Indeed, after the trouble I'd gone to, I even felt personally responsible for the success of this event. Hmm. Coming to the square, I stopped for a moment to catch my breath. I was It wasn't that the cart was heavy. It ran smoothly without any noticeable effort required. It was just that any physical exertion caused pain to me now. Both the physical and mental one. Oh, am I going to like... I sat down on the bench and closed my eyes for a moment. What's that? I didn't really give a damn who it was. Probably just a few pioneer girls taking interest in my unfamiliar companion in distress. Um, what are you talking about? I asked her tiredly. She didn't reply. Those are the ingredients for the cake. Do you like cakes? I don't know. So you never tried cake? I don't know. Obviously the girl didn't get what I was talking about, but it didn't surprise me for that moment. I wasn't really interested in the conversation, so I tried... Um, I was so tired that I had zero intention of classifying external distractions and tagging them as either common or uncommon. I see. Calm down to the canteen later uh, Canteen later, and have a bite. Really? Really. What are they made of? What? I asked indifferently. These cakes. Well, some flour, some sugar, various fillings. Now, that's a strange question. Doesn't she know what cakes are made of? And you have it all here? Eh, sort of. And sugar? And sugar. Could you lend me a little? What for? I thought it was over the top. 
A sudden gust of wind made me grab the card and instinctively open my eyes. However, nobody was there. Am I daydreaming? I noticed Lou that the sugar shack was untied and a small heap had poured out. Could it be that she was scared by the wind and ran away? Having fixed the sack, I got up to the bench and continued on my challenging strawberry way. There wasn't a single person near the canteen. No wonder. Dinner was an hour away. But the I brought the handcart to a rest near the exit and hand the food stuff to the camp cook. She must have already been told what to do with them, as she gave me in such an unpleasant look. I'm not sure how long it takes to bake a cake, but she seems to have had a hurry. To had to hurry. I just wanted to relax for the remaining time up to dinner. In short, I was so tired that I just sat on the steps and waited. My eyes closed themselves. I guess I got so tired throughout the day that I didn't even know someone came up to me until they patted me on the shoulder. Hello, Miku. I'm sorry I'm so mean to you. Hi. Miku was standing before me. Yeah. I didn't need a mirror to imagine the expression of skepticism and annoyance on my face. Oh, excuse me, I must have interrupted you. No problem, I was just sitting here. Oh, alright then. Miku beamed with a smile. I was just coming to dinner, though it's time or it's that time already, and then it appeared to be that it's too early. Then I decided to check uh check just in case maybe it's not me who's making the clock is. Well, not the clock. Clocks can't be mistaken. Maybe I just that I misread it. She seems to be uh she seemed to be utter ultimately confused now and fell silent. Still about a half hour before dinner. Oh, that's great. I'll just sit here with you and wait, right? Frankly speaking, I do mind. You know, I have some matters to attend to. I stood up and qu I stood up quickly and left without saying goodbye, ignoring Miku as I always did, while she screamed something after me. I am, like, really mean to her, honestly. A minute later, I got to the square and sat on the bench with the firm intention of finding a quiet and safe place to wait for dinner. I think this is the first time in the last four and a half days when I felt like this. I wasn't just irritated because of some insignificant details, but, in but indeed I was really angry. I've, com I've completely stopped caring about where I am and why, am I he uh, why I am here. I don't care about how to get out either. What's driving me mad is that I have to carry out some stupid task given by our camp leader. It's always me who gets into stupid situations and sometimes even ends up looking like a clown. All of this is some kind of alien trick or plot of the universal mind. They better consult with their psychiatrist. I gritted my teeth and clenched my fist. The most annoying thing is that everything that happens seems to happen by itself somehow. I'd be happier not having to carry around bags of sugar that weigh a ton, but I had no choice at all. I mean, any other option would lead to much worth uh, a much worse consequence than a muscle strain or hurt pride. Who are you angry with? Oyano was standing in front of me and smiled slyly. <sighs> Nobody really. I answered absently. But my fist gave me away. Just... Uh, just like that. Oh, okay. Okay. It's up to you. You better tell me. Why did you run around the camp the whole day with some kind of bags? I had to. I replied reluctantly. I guess it was food. Maybe it was. Oyana was about to say something, but at that moment the bell rang, calling the pioneers for dinner. I sighed in relief and quickly headed to the canteen, leaving Oyana behind. A cake would take hours to bake, wouldn't it? You couldn't bake it in a half an hour. So that's probably not going to be done for a while. Semyon, thank you very much. For what? The camp leader gave me a friendly smile. For the cake, of course. Ah, uh, sure. So that as at that exact moment, that understood the true meaning of the saying, keep your thanks to feed your cat. You didn't tell anyone. It's not to be a surprise. Yeah. That's my boy. And now, off to go to dinner. Olga waved her hand, pointing at the canteen. I stepped through the doorway and started, uh, slowly and started to look for a free place. Turned out there were plenty today, so I got a chance to eat all alone. There was fish with mashed potatoes for dinner. What misfortune again. I'll be left half, uh, left half hungry. Didn't we have fish for lunch? Was it a fish-only day today? Having pushed my plate with the fried sea dweller away, I laid my hand a head on my hands and closed my eyes. But soon somebody came to the table. Hey, are you all right? I'm fine. I replied without changing my position. Just tired? Ah, a little. 
That's bad. Slavia said it seriously. Of course. Remember that we are going to, uh, for a hike after dinner, don't you? Have you prepared everything? Nobody told me fucking anything. What? Where? I put my eyes and lifted my head up instantly. Anna was standing by Slavia. The hike. She was surprised. Didn't you know? No. I put my head down on the table and covered it with my hands. If only it could sink into the ground right away. The girls remained silent. I was left alone with my thoughts for some time, and that was fine by me. Maybe I could have sat that way until the end of dinner time, but the strong voice of Olga was heard from the opposite end of the canteen. Guys, to celebrate the miraculous rescue of a friend and comrade Shurik, we bake this cake for you all. I lifted my head and looked towards the camp leader, but couldn't see anything behind, uh, beyond the pioneers' backs. A second, just a second, and nothing about me. Nothing about me rescuing Shirk or gathering the greetings for this cake. <sighs> As if that's how it ought to be. Well, it would be wrong to expect anything else from our camp leader. Let's go, or we won't get our share. Slavia smiled. Let's go. Lena agreed. Ah, sure. I'm sure in Soviet Russia... They split up the cake evenly. I got up reluctantly and tagged along behind the girls. As we approached a crowd of pioneers, Olga was just putting the cake in the center of the table. And now... What the fuck? What the fuck? What the... What? What the... What the... What the... What the... What the... No, my fate, my head, no, can't, not, can't, not, come, no, not, not, come, but, I, the, words, words, what are, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I feel as though I need to walk away from this for a short time. Because my head is not comprehending this properly. Okay, I, I'm gonna try to see, uh, I had, what is even happening? If this is a good time to end the episode, then I'm just gonna end it here. If there's enough to, if there's not enough for another episode after this, then I'll, oh my goodness, I'm just, no, 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 no. No, 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 ending episode, ending episode, ending episode. If there's not enough to make another episode, then this will continue after this, but oh my goodness, goodbye, goodbye.